Welcome to The Peak, where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Mike Mittman. On this week's episode, a nonprofit theater brings magic to audiences of all ages. Volunteer opportunities in Lehigh Valley and St. Luke's competes in a Spartan race. All that and more coming up on The Peak. The Civic Theater's marquee lights up every season with shows for all ages. See how they inspire actors, directors, and audiences throughout the year. When an audience member comes to Civic Theater, from the moment that they walk through the door, they're going to get something that is really hard to find in other places. They'll notice this incredible, beautiful theater. They can expect to be welcomed, transcended in what they feel, to get a sense of community, to be in awe of the talent that we have in the Lehigh Valley. They can expect quality, community, and I think they can expect to be part of a family. Civic Theater is the oldest continuously running nonprofit theater in the entire Lehigh Valley. It has a place here in Allentown's history. It serves a vital, vital role in our community, and it brings the arts to families, to adults, to anyone that has a passion for art and film. I love that you can come see the big, huge musicals with a million people on stage, and I love that you can come see the small, intimate plays that really dig deep and that you can't see in other community theaters. We've given opportunities to children and adults to work in an atmosphere that's safe, professional, and extraordinary. The education that's offered here at Civic Theater is really something quite extraordinary from the, the theater school itself, where students from very young ages up through and including high school seniors are taking classes to the even bigger opportunity to learn by doing, to be part of the main stage productions. The skills that they take from what they learn here can be used in so many other areas of life. They develop confidence and skills that you can't get from any other program. It develops empathy, it develops kindness. The basic skills of finding your voice, being able to be comfortable, talking in a group of people, all of those skills are relevant in theater and they can translate into their everyday lives. Civic Theater has really given me the opportunities to be who I am without any worries and has, I think, really prepared me for a career in theater. It really feels like I've grown up here, like this is just home for me. It's where I feel most safe. You can see your progress through friends, cast members, and on stage. I love coming to civic theater classes because it's where I'm happy. Every time you walk into the theater, you're always just graced by positive attitudes by everyone. I love coming to theater classes because of the amazing people. It helps me learn more about acting and it brings me out of my comfort zone. It's two days in and you're already a part of the big civic family. I love to see children that have never been able to speak above a whisper suddenly take to the stage and be so proud of singing and dancing and to see that carried into their everyday lives and into their school behavior and such. It's given me so much opportunities and it really brought me into theater and I'll always have to thank it for doing that. It gave me a home and it gave me a chance to discover who I was, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, what my voice was. And I'm forever grateful and I will do whatever I can now to make sure that other artists get that same opportunity. Civic theater is an important part of our region because it has been 
a pillar in the community for, I mean, close to a hundred years now. This is a theater for everyone. There is a place for you here. There is rarely anything that wouldn't apply to someone that just wants to give back to their community and be a part of this family, and we really are a family here. Thank you so much for your support over the years of our Civic Theater. Thank you, Civic Theater. Thank you, Civic Theater. Thank you very much, Civic Theater, for helping me find where I belong. This hidden gem in Allentown is a must visit. Now let's check in with Holly as she explores volunteer opportunities in our area. It's always a good time of year to talk about volunteering. And while this is the season of giving, we thought we should show you a few ways you can give back in Lehigh Valley. Starting with Meals on Wheels, this organization aims to deliver not just meals, but also smiles and support to our neighbors in need. This community-based program delivers meals to people who may have difficulty preparing or even obtaining their own meals due to various reasons such as physical limitations, illness, or disability. The program is designed to ensure that vulnerable or homebound individuals receive proper nutrition and social interaction. Meals on Wheels plays a vital role in addressing food insecurity and social isolation among seniors and other vulnerable populations. They rely on donations, government funding, and volunteer efforts to continue their important work. We all deserve a good meal and good conversation. How about a roof over our head? Grab your hard hats and your tool belts for this one. Habitat for Humanity is a global nonprofit organization dedicated to providing safe and affordable housing for people in need. The organization's mission is to eliminate substandard housing and homelessness by building, renovating, and repairing homes in partnership with individuals and families who are struggling with inadequate housing and financial hardship. Habitat for Humanity's work is driven by the belief that everyone deserves a decent place to live. The organization relies on the support of volunteers, donors, and community partnerships to make homeownership and affordable housing a reality for people in need. It feels good to spend time helping others, and it's what makes our communities better. Our final stop does just that and so much more in so many different ways. Allow us to introduce you to Ripple Community Incorporated. It's an independent 501c3 nonprofit organization guided by the vision of Allentown as a community where everyone has a role to play, a diverse network of social support, and a connection to the place they call home. Its programs serve over 150 Allentown residents, including people experiencing homelessness or housing instability, people who are socially isolated, people living with significant histories of trauma or mental illness, and the working poor. For our neighbors living with challenges like these, RCI is a source of friendship, support, and community. Volunteers can help in many ways, by leading activities, participating in crafts or games, or just by sitting and having a conversation with our community members. It's always better when we're together, and in this region, nothing is more true. Find what speaks to you and volunteer today. I'm Holly Jones with Discover Lehigh Valley, and that was A Peek at the Valley. Sign me up for a great cause. Thanks, Holly. Up next, we dive into the importance of physical therapy with tips from St. Luke's. Stay tuned. You're watching The Peak. St. Luke's shares ways to prevent shoulder pain. Check it out. Hi, I'm Howie Knudsen, Regional Director with Physical Therapy at St. Luke's. This is Physical Therapy Tips from Physical Therapy at St. Luke's. Today, we will be talking about shoulder pain. Please be mindful of your posture. When sitting, keep your head over your shoulders and keep your shoulders back. When sleeping, lay on either your back or your side. Avoid carrying a backpack or purse over just one shoulder. Minimize working with your arms above shoulder height for very long. When possible, use a footstool or ladder to lessen the strain on your shoulders. Try not to lift heavy objects with your arms outstretched. Lift and carry objects close to your body when possible. Take regular breaks 
from repetitive activity. Thank you for watching. If you are a part of a team or organization that would like to learn more about injury prevention, physical therapy at St. Luke's can help. My shoulders will thank me later. Thanks for the advice, St. Luke's. Next up, Sarah tests her endurance with a visit to Six Cycle Studio in Allentown. Hi, I'm Sarah Viteri, and this is Voices of the Valley. Today, we're at Six Cycle Studio in Allentown, where they put a fun spin on fitness. Let's check it out. Hi. Hi, Emma. Thank you so much for having me here Thanks today. Thanks so much for being here. And I love this studio. I know that Six Cycle started in Pittsburgh. Correct. What brought it here to Lehigh Valley? I was in Pittsburgh. I worked in the oil and gas industry at the time, and I worked at Six Cycle, which was there. I, I was in a near fatal car accident, and my family, I'm originally from the Lehigh Valley, um, so my family brought me home. When I was here then, in that time, I had been gone from work for so long, so I've been thinking about you know, if I went back to, to life after after the whole pandemic, right. you know, what what was I gonna go back to? So I just thought I should go back to something I love. So from being here and realizing that the Lehigh Valley was without something that I just now considered a part of who I was, I just thought it was something that I needed to bring here. Yes, and, and I'm so glad that you did. It's really hard to find a good cycling class in Lehigh Valley. I can sure. say that for as sure. somebody who's been searching as well. And rhythmic cycling is actually one of my favorite forms of exercises. Definitely. So can you tell us what are the benefits of cycling? We match choreography with, with a lot of endurance and power and intensity. Um, to really give you a full body workout. I feel like I'm so. at a club sometimes when I'm in one of those classes. I'm having a ball, I'm having Absolutely. a good time. Then the time melts, which is what I love yep. about yep. it. Well, I'd love to see where the magic happens. Can you take me on a little tour? For sure, follow me. Wow, look at this place. There are a lot of bikes here. Yes. Yeah. How many people fit in here? 21 now. 20, 22, coming soon. <laughs> I saw that you were bringing these bikes to outdoor events throughout the Lehigh Valley yes. at different businesses. For sure. Tell us about that, and that's a lot of work. So we've got it down to a science now, but we just put them on a truck, and if you have a, a safe yeah. space for us to put them, we'll we'll do the classic. Yeah, so I saw you, you were at the promenade shops. You were at the Pocket Park in Allentown, Jay's, Craig, all over. I was like, yes. that is such a cool concept to bring it to businesses, get the community involved. And I know that you were a personal trainer, an avid weightlifter. So tell us why cycling now? So I have been into working out since I was young. I mean, I've been lifting since I was 14 years old. So when I found cycling and I was able to find something that I could still push my body as hard as I do in, in these classes and also bring other people along with me, yeah. um, it just kind of brought it all together. So Absolutely. I love it. Well, I personally love getting my butt kicked when I take a class. I would love to hear that. There's a class coming up. You want to join it? Should I guys? Yes, yes. Okay, I guess I'm in. Let's get you some shoes. Let's get me some shoes. <laughs> well, Emma, thank you so much for giving me a tour of this wonderful business. And the only thing I would say, bring water and a towel because she's not gonna, <laughs> she's not gonna go easy on you. 100%. So when the music hits right and you have a motivational instructor like Emma here, it's such a wonderful experience. I highly recommend taking a class here at Six Cycle. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Emma, for having us. Thank you. And I'm Sarah Viteri, and this is Voices of the Valley. Should we do another class? For sure. Right, let's do it. <laughs>Spartan race is all about the human spirit. People facing adversity, facing challenge, facing great pain quite often, and overcoming that, winning, just demonstrating that the, the human spirit is amazing in overcoming challenge. And certainly we see that in the hospital every day. It's important for St. Luke's to participate in the Spartan race because 
It allows us to show the community that we're engaged more than just within the walls of our offices and our hospitals. We engage with our community. We try to be role models for healthy living. And also we like to have some fun, which is really what Spartan's all about. In the last two years, we became a formal sponsor with Spartan. It's also a great partnership with Blue Mountain, who has been a, a great supporter of ours as well. You know, we have a tent the day of the race where our employees and participants can come and recover, get some shade, just a lot of support. St. Luke's has about 200 participants in the race, and we have a terrific network of trainers that train a lot of the Spartan participants. We're really focusing on building the muscle strength, endurance, cardiovascular conditioning, but also energy system development to be able to do the Spartan activities because it has a 3.1 mile run with 20 obstacles built on it. And it's gonna be warm out, so learning how to exercise in the warmer weather is really important, and hydrating properly is gonna be critical. I wanted to help them prep for the Spartan race because Spartan races are hard, <laughs> of course, and nutrition is part of the training plan. So I wanna make sure that they're fueling themselves appropriately for the grueling race that is the Spartan one. <laughs> We have a lot of fun. At 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, we have 40 to 45 people coming in, exercising all together as a group. So it's really about motivating each other to be a participant in an exercise program that ultimately culminates with an event like Spartan. The most rewarding part about helping these athletes with their nutrition for a Spartan event is seeing them crush their goals and knowing that my nutrition information and advice might have been that factor to put them over the finish line. Today's game day. Today we're at the end of the process, representing St. Luke's as the presenting sponsor. We've worked hard, we've gotten ourselves ready, we've eaten well, we've trained hard. Expectations for the day of the race, lots of mud, lots of challenges, lots of elevation changes, lots of Spartan spirit where people are helping each other out and it's just a, you know, a great vibe out there on the mountain. The most rewarding part is getting to do it with other people, even if I don't know them, knowing that we all went through this race together and that we all accomplished something really difficult. The camaraderie on the course is awesome. Even the camaraderie amongst our employees, it, you know, this is a time to meet people you haven't known and get out and just have fun being a little kid getting dirty. Certainly the Spartan race is the perfect reflection of that philosophy and belief in healthy living. It allows a healthcare organization to really put our money where our mouth is when it comes to committing to events that show people the way to improving their health. St. Luke's believes that in order for people to be truly healthy not only are we there to provide them with proper medical care but we're also there to provide them with how to be stronger and more fit from a lifestyle perspective. We want to improve quality of life, not just quantity of life. We want to make sure the life that people are living is a wellness life, a healthy life, and an enjoyable life. Joining me today is John Nespoli, president of the St. Luke's Lee Heighton and Carbon campuses. Thank you so much for being here, John. Thanks for having me, Ashley. Great to be here. So as we saw, the St. Luke's staff recently participated in the Spartan race, which is so exciting and pretty uh, intimidating, if you ask me, but they did a great job. Why is it important for St. Luke's to participate in competitions like this one? You know, St. Luke's has a very deep passion for keeping the community well. We're very much into fitness and wellness, and the Spartan race is just a great example. If you know anything about the Spartan race, it's very challenging. You know, it, it takes a lot of grit, resilience, uh, toughness to get through it. And so it's great in terms of physical and mental health, but it kind of connects back to our core mission. You know, so often when we take care of our patients, they're learning about a great health challenge for the first time in their life. We observe that those patients with the fighting spirit, the grit, the determination to get well, it has an impact. It really does. So there's a nice correlation to what we're doing at you know, with the Spartan organization. It is a great way to connect to the community. And I know that St. Luke's does a lot of health and wellness uh, initiatives within their walls and within their the network. But what about in community? Because the Spartan race is a great example. What are some other ways that St. Luke's gets out into community to promote health and wellness? Thanks, Ashley. I mean, I, you know, I've uh, worked in healthcare for so many years. And to be honest, I've never seen the kind of outreach I've seen in my in my time at uh, St. Luke's. Beyond the Blue Mountain Partnership, we touch just about every aspect of the community. You know, we have great partnerships in the schools with mental health support, sports performance, athletic training. We go out into the community with our veterans. We recently opened a veterans hub and over 4,000 vets have accessed this since we opened it a year ago. And we have uh, literacy programs and you know, we've handed out thousands of free books, age appropriate books to 
kids of all ages. Well, John, there are so many great outreach programs happening at St. Luke's. Why is it important for St. Luke's to meet people in the communities in which they live? Because it's an extensive footprint and St. Luke's is always reaching their patients in their communities. Why is that important? Health is the ultimate determinant of uh, quality of life. And, uh, you know, access to all these programs locally in each community really does assure us that the residents of the county do actively participate in, in these programs. So the more presence we have throughout the county, the more likelihood people will get engaged uh, you know, in, in these uh, wellness programs. Another good example in behavioral health over at the Lee Heighton campus, we, uh, about a year ago, we opened up a walk-in center for behavioral health, first in the state, and anybody who is struggling, and it doesn't have to be crisis, if you're depressed, if you have anxiety attacks, if you are just challenged, you know, with uh, day-to-day living, uh, anybody from the county now can walk into the St. Luke's Behavioral Health Walk-in Center. So it's meeting people in the community. It can be very intimidating. So often when people are in crisis, they uh, go to the emergency department. Scary place. Air emergency department has heart attacks and trauma. So this is just a lower intensity, less scary environment for those challenged with mental health to get immediate access to a mental health provider. Well, that is incredibly important as it's been on the rise, especially since COVID. So John, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about all of the amazing things St. Luke's is doing in our community. You bet. My honor. Thanks for the opportunity. The staff at St. Luke's shows us their resilience in and out of the hospital. I'm Mike Mittman. Thanks for watching. To learn more about anything from today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. And remember, every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. <laughs> I got to pretend to work. I'm working right now. Oh, right when we're about to of start. course, as soon as he said rolling. Next up, Sarah Ten. <laughs> Portions of this program were paid for by St. Luke's University Health Network. The Peak TV is a production of ASR Media. To see more of The Peak TV, check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and catch us on WFMZ Channel 69.